you know, most states criminalize children possessing or accessing firearms. We're the armed attorneys. Today, we're talking about a semi-viral TikTok video that shows a juvenile protecting her household with a handgun. Now, before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And let's talk about the details of this case. So yeah. we, it, this video is circulating online. The video, I mean, it essentially shows this this young girl, they thought an intruder was inside of their house. They called the police. The police took 20 minutes to respond. Um, and what we have is- Well, this was Houston, wasn't it? Yes. Typical. Yes. Also, I hate TikTok. We'll get that out there right now. Okay, but, yeah. Okay, let's move forward. All right. But it shows, and what we see is the, uh, the doorbell camera capturing mm -hmm. the police arriving, meeting the girls, and, and kind of going from there. And there ended up not being an intruder, so everything was fine. But that just shows, you know, when seconds count, maybe the police are 20 minutes away. So mm -hmm. you got to be careful. And But it raises this question of, you know, most states criminalize children possessing or accessing firearms. And so we wanted to talk about, you know, talk about this because they're this this kid didn't commit a crime. Right. And why Absolutely. is that? Well, so I think we have to break it down here with federal law and state law, as we very often do. Um, and, you know, we'll say, first of all, and I'll let you talk about the federal law, mm -hmm. but I'll just talk about state by state. Some states actually have baked into their law exceptions for a child's possession of a handgun specifically for self-defense. I mean, we're contemplating exactly what happened here, which yep. is that someone has broken into the house, even though this wasn't actually a break-in, but they didn't know that at the time. Right. Someone's broken into the house. The child knows where the handgun is. The child must gain access to that firearm in order to defend the family. Lots of states have that actually written in. Um, some states do not though. And the states that don't actually, there's probably still a defense that will apply here, which is a common law defense. I, I don't know of any state that does not recognize the defense of necessity. Yeah, and what is defense of necessity? Defense of necessity is a choice of evils defense. So essentially what you're saying is, Yes, I committed some harm, right? Some wrong, some tort, some crime, whatever it was. Yeah, in this case, a kid possessing a firearm. Right, crime. Mm -hmm. However, I did that thing in order to avoid some greater harm, which would be, of course, the family being murdered, the house being broken into, all of these things. So generally speaking, and again, there might be some state out there that doesn't recognize defense of necessity, and I just don't know it, but I don't know of one. But so for the most part, even if it's not baked into your statutory law or your case law specifically, you've got this common law defense that's sort of a catch-all that says, okay, you know, child or potentially even, you know, parents, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the people in this scenario are relieved from criminal liability because of, you know, choice of evils. Right. So. And that brings us to the federal law, uh, which is 18 U.S.C. 922X, which generally criminalizes the possession of handguns and handgun ammunition by juveniles. And that brings us to one important exception, which is defense against an intruder into the residence of the of the person who's defending themselves, the juvenile in this case. Now, why this is such an interesting issue, I mean, this, this goes to show that our lawmakers had a little bit of forethought when it mm -hmm. came to crafting this, uh, but we come to this interesting issue that comes up from time to time with um, LEOSA, that comes up with the Federal sure. Safe Passage provision, and that's federal supremacy. And so even if I would say a state doesn't have a provision that says, hey, a, a child can't possess a handgun, no matter what, there's no excuse, um, we run into this issue where the two laws may conflict and there may be you know, a defense here, wouldn't you yeah. say? Oh yeah, absolutely. And now I will say, we actually don't know of a case where this has been asserted, right, but, um, but it's certainly possible. Yeah, yeah, I'd say there's a very good argument. You know, when the federal government decides to occupy an area of mm -hmm. law, that law, supersede state law general rule you know general there are there's an exception out there for illegitimate federal laws but we haven't really ran into that scenario yet but there is a really good stinking argument that says hey the federal government has decided to occupy this field as far as juveniles possessing handguns in defense of you know somebody trying to break into the residence and therefore if a state made a law contrary to this that the federal law would supersede and control so what this would practically look like let's go back to our TikTok example uh, you know, let's say the state wanted to charge this 
juvenile for possessing the handgun. Well, they could raise this federal mm -hmm. protection, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And ultimately, yes, I mean, it's an argument um, that can be made to a judge and then um, ho you, ho you hope that it doesn't get to a jury, but potentially it could. Um, and it would be a fascinating argument to raise, although you always hope that you can prevail on state law um, instead of doing something totally novel. Yes, but I think, you know, it's it's not a bad idea to teach, you know, your children to respect firearms, mm -hmm. the rules of firearm safety, and ultimately how to defend themselves because we see, you know, we're responsible for our own safety. And, you know, going back to that 20 minutes, a lot of crime can take place in 20 minutes. And so you want to be able to keep yourself safe, your family safe, and so something to consider. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by leaving a comment. Until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.